Hello YouTubers, welcome to Fugo Coda's channel. Today, let's talk something about the Coda stuff. Let's talk about a uh, DIY workstation I built during the shelter in place for my development work. So what's exciting about this machine is it has AMD's Ryzen 3900X in it. It's absolutely a powerful beast, but how is it doing as developer workstation CPU? Let's check out. So the story behind the workstation is I was originally planning to build a video processing workstation and the 3000 series is on a moderate discount so I think it's a good time to start such a build. I was also having performance problem with my uh, company's work laptop which is a 2018 MacBook Pro. So it frequently hangs and uh, freezes I think both the CPU and the memory size is bottleneck. So I was deciding to give it a try for AMD's Ryzen processor. So the spec of the workstation is 3900X, 64 gigs of memory, a GTX 1070 Ti graphics card, one terabyte of NVMe SSD. I was pretty painful using my company's uh, work laptop. That's why I decided to kind of max out. Well, it's it's not ab it's not the absolute max out. Kind of relatively maxed out. I was debating between the eight core 3700X processor versus this 12 core one, and finally decided to pull the trigger on the 12 core version. So how is this machine doing in my development work? So I'll share the conclusion first. For my work. It's an absolute overkill. Some context about my work. I am a Java developer uh, working on the backend. My team owns a couple of uh, Java-based microservices and a bunch of other language-based scripts which doesn't use pretty often. For most of my work scenario, it's uh, compile and debug Java-based applications. Overall, the performance is very impressive. For most of the time, the CPU usage doesn't go above 20%. And the memory usage is anywhere between 15 gigs to 25 gigs. I feel Java is not pushing my machine hard enough. To be fair, I also did a test of compiling Firefox. So here's some pre-build configuration. Um, let's just set everything to default. Blah, blah, blah. Let's fast forward here. It's pretty boring. The CPU is not pushed hard enough. Downloading a couple of dependencies. Default, default. Okay, it's done. So let the fun begin. Checking, checking, checking a bunch of things. Okay, the CPU usage usage starts to ramp ramp up. Okay. It's compiling. Um, the whole process is pretty boring. The CPU is 100%. It's doing a bunch of work. So let's just uh, fast forward, fast forward. Still working, still working. The memory is around 25 to 30 gigs of usage. Okay, it's finished now. So, Let's see, 9 minutes, 3 seconds. How is that performance? Leave your thoughts in the comment below. So another thing I like it is the system runs very quiet. I choose liquid cooler, so even the CPU is on the load, the system runs very quiet. I can still hear the fan spinning up so that it's trying to dissipate more heat. But it's not disturbing, it's you know just some background noise increased slightly. Some drawbacks. Although the overall performance is great, um, there is kind of random little bugs here and there in the system. For example, I have never been successfully put my system to hibernate and recover it. For me this is kind of a big deal because I, I have dual operating system on it. Uh, Linux for my work and Windows for video processing. Ideally, I want to save everything on Linux when I was switching to Windows. I want the hibernation to work, but unfortunately it hasn't. Some other random bugs is like I installed a uh, PCIe based Wi-Fi 6 card so that I don't need to pull a super long Ethernet cable from, from router to the machine. The Wi-Fi card works flawlessly on Windows. 
but it just randomly disappears in the system bus in Linux. I have to restart to get the Wi-Fi card back. So I think in that perspective, I don't think Linux is a good option for your daily use just because the computer manufacturers don't spend time to ensure their product stability with Linux products. I mean, you could spend some time to get it work. I'm pretty sure I'm not the first guy to encounter this problem and the answer is already somewhere in Stack Overflow, just a problem of time. You have to spend it, investigate it, and get it work. So that's all for today's video. If you like it, click the thumbs up button below, subscribe to my channel to receive the latest update, and see you guys next time.